Hey guys, what's going on? My name is Bram and today I'll be guiding you guys through yet another Flutter SDK tutorial. Our topic for today will be visualizing data in a list view. Now I will be using the data that I got from my previous tutorial with the HTTP requests and the REST API. But of course, if you have other data from say Firebase or some other server, feel free to use that. Just make sure that if it's a JSON file to decode it to a list first like this. Um, and if you already have some list data, um, that would also work. Awesome. So I will run, I'll run through the run now. I will clean up the project. And once that is done, I will come back to you guys. All right. So I have created my project and the result looks like this. We've got a basic application with an app bar. So let's take a look at the code real quick. So we've got our main method over here. We are displaying a home page, which is a stateful widget and the state of our homepage is called homepage stage state, I'm sorry, which is displaying a scaffold with an app bar with some text in it. Awesome. Now you can also see that I've got some unused imports at the top of main.dart. I will be using those imports for my HTTP request. But of course, if you're using some other way to get your data or if you're using local data or whatever, you know, you do not have to um, put those imports there, of course. Now, because I've already created my function to get my data in the previous tutorial, I'll just be copying and pasting that function for my GitHub repository. So if you want to follow along with the exact code for my tutorial, um, go to this um, GitHub repository. I will link it down in the description below. Go to library, go to main.dart and search for a function called get data, copy it and put it at the top of homepage state. Now you will see that there is one undefined variable called data. So this variable is going to be the variable that holds all of the data for our list view. So it makes sense to actually define it at the top of our clause of our homepage state. And it's going to be a list. Now, if you're using your own data, really try to, to get it into a list data type because it really just makes sense to use a list with list view, of course, and it just makes life so much easier. Awesome. So now we can start creating our list view. So scroll down and go to your scaffolds, make a new body, and we will be creating a new list view dot builder for that body. Now the difference between a list view and a list view dot builder, basically a list view dot builder tries to, with some calculations in the background, figure out what is relevant to render and that will speed up your or smooth the scroll experience for the user if you are um, if you have a lot of data. So if you have a lot of data, use the list view builder. It's a little bit harder to implement than the list view. So if you have if you do not have a lot of data, feel free to use the list view. But we'll be using the list view builder. Now the list view builder um, needs an item count to know how many items there are. So if you do not know the item count at the beginning, so, you know, of course you could just say, okay, there will be 10 items, but if you do not know the item count at the beginning, you could naively say something like, okay, data is a list. So you could just do data dot length. But of course that would actually not work because at the beginning of our application, data is not assigned to any, ver to any value yet. So data is going to be null and calling null length on a null object will throw an error. So first of all, we need to take a look whether data equals null. So data null, question mark. If it is null, then our item count is going to be zero, else it is going to be data dot length. So um, this is called the ternary operator, or at least I'm pretty sure it's called the ternary operator. And it's a short form for an if else statement. So if the data equals null, then item count equals zero, else data um, item count is equal to data dot length. Now, something else that our list view builder needs is an item builder. And this looks a lot like our build um, method that we write so often in, in our widgets. So it will look a little bit like this, build context, context. And it will also need an index to keep track of the um, current list view item. In here, we can now start creating our layout for the individual list view items. So I could say return new card 
for example, but of course I can use any other, um, I could use any other widget in there. And I could, you know, give it a child, etc., etc. But before we do that, we actually still need to um, call get data somewhere because we got the function, so we know we can get the data, but where should we call it? Because we want it at the beginning of our application. There is a function, there is a function called um, boop, 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 in its state, and we should override it. And in its state is called before anything gets rendered gets rendered to the screen. So if we call get data in in its state, the get data. Um, let's make it this dot get data. If we call this uh, in get data in in its state, then we will be calling um, asking for our data before we actually render something on the screen. Now, of course, if you are on a really slow internet connection it still might take some time. So something might, so um, your list view might um, be rendered with zero items at the beginning. Um, but if this is done, we should actually um, assign data to our results, just like we do over here. But of course, to re-render our list view, we actually need to set the state. So we don't actually assign it just like this, we actually need to do this dot set state. Just um, I've already done a tutorial about this, so if you're not familiar with this, um, check that out. And we need to put that in here because whenever this changes, set state will be um, will set the state for our data, which will re-render our list view. Awesome. So now our data is assigned to some some value so we can start using it in our list view. So in our item builder, we already have our cart. So let's now start using um, our data variable. So let's make a child, which is going to be a new text. That new text is going to be um, data index because we have the index, so we can use data index. And now, of course, I do not know how your data is structured, but like you can see over here, my data has a title, so I want to display the title. So let me just say type title and save that. Now there is a little bit with the Visual Studio Code, uh, which which prevents me from hot reloading um, a freshly new created list view. So I actually have to restart this. So I will be back with you guys in a second. All right, so after a full restart of our application, this is the result. So we got a not so smooth at the moment list view, um, but we got a list view with all of our data. So the reason why it's not quite as smooth, as buttery smooth as promised yet is because we are running, of course, on an emulator and we're running in slow mode. But I can assure you that once you have, you know, installed your application on a device in um, distribution mode or whatever you want to call it, you will have a very smooth experience. Now, of course, you can clean up this mess a little bit. You can um, make an, a new, better layout in your item builder, but this is basically the general idea on how to create list views with data. All right, guys, so I really hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, if you did, please leave a thumbs up. If you didn't, please you know dislike, but comment down in the comments below why you didn't like it. And I'll talk to you guys in the next video. Bye.